Hello everybody. Today I'll discuss uh, about the shaping of the ceramics. I mean to say that what uh, the ceramic material can be uh, processed. So one of the most widely used uh, processing techniques for the ceramic is the slip casting process. So uh, this slip casting process we see it's a it's a kind of the very old technique actually it's a pottery technique we, we try to create the uh, ceramic objects using this uh, particular technology. So uh, we'll try to understand that how this uh, slip casting is usually occurs uh, associated with the this thing for ceramic material. So we understand that uh, this this slip casting is started with the raw materials in the form of a very fine powder with a very fine powder form and then it is actually mixed with a suspended in a, in a liquid solution and then when we pour this liquid solution uh, in a some kind of the porous material so through the porous material the water can be absorbed and then uh, these powders can make a layer over the surface of this uh, porous material uh, once it we remove uh, this uh, porous material from uh, this and separate uh, from the layer of the ceramics and then that this layer after we can do some kind of the uh, uh, other processing further processing of this layer in the just to try to make it a hard then it becomes a uh, ceramic uh, component so this is the basic technology associated with the uh, ceramic material which is known as the slip, slip casting process now we'll try to use the technical terms usually associated with the slip casting process first is that we need uh, involved means the pouring of the liquid uh, this clay mixture clay mixture means so the particular clay is a very fine particles clay we mixed up and then which is known as actually slip that's why from there this is the na name the slip casting is actually comes into the picture now this this liquid solution is basically poured into the porous mold so porous mold which is more easily available that we can use the plaster of paris uh, as a mold material in this particular case now already mentioned the ceramic particles is basically suspended in an uh, immiscible liquid generally water so basically this powder particle is mixed with the water but this it is the particle is suspended but not exactly mixing with the water and of course we prepare the slip in such a way that uh, it becomes having very low viscosity so that it can easily flow uh, over the surface of the mold material so actually this slip casting process utilized for both artistic purpose as well as the industrial process also the industrial process of the ceramic uh, uh, processing both way uh, both the pers um, aspect or uh, perspective we can utilize uh, this slip casting process now steps in the slip casting process we will try to discuss here first is the mold preparation so mold is basically the mold should be some kind of the porous material so here typically we use the plaster because it absorbs the water from the slip so that kind of the property should have the mold material so that's why we choose the common was the plaster of Paris or made of plaster that is basically able to absorb the water such that it will be able to segregate uh, this uh, the suspended particles with the water. So that is the purpose of using plaster as a mold material in this particular case. Now mold, uh, mold can be as a single piece or it can be a multiple pieces also or it can be from very simple shape or mold can be very complex shapes based on that and this slip casting process can follow. So once we do the mold preparation then preparation of the slip that means I can say that here preparation of the uh, raw materials uh, for the uh, ceramic processing or slip casting process. So slip is made of uh, by mixing the finely ground clay with water until it reaches a very uh, very smooth so appearance to the very smooth uh, finish uh, will be able to achieve. So that's why uh, it is simply very finely uh, grinded this clay particles is basically mixed with the water. So it looks like very smooth uh, solution kind of things is it, it will produce. Defluents can be used is a chemicals that sometimes is added with the, the this uh, this with the slip that will help to uh, bring the flowability of the this uh, slip basically the raw materials uh, in this case. So basically with the addition of this particular chemical it reduces its viscosity. So viscosity reduces those so can easily flow uh, over the mold surface. So that the consistency should be very smooth and pourable. Pourable means it, we can it's, it looks like very smooth uh, surface appearance and then it can be able to pour and pourable means basically if we uh, reduce the viscosity then it becomes more pourable. So that is the main purpose of making the uh, slip preparation that with that sufficient viscosity will be there such that we can easily pour into the uh, into the mold. The slip is often saved uh, or remove any impurities 
or lumps can be uh, removed from uh, the seed because if the presence of the impurities or in the presence of the lumps uh, within the, the mixture, the solution, uh, then it will create some kind of the defects in the in this particular uh, process. So that is why we try to avoid what um, the, any kind of the presence of any kind of the impurities or any kind of the lumps in the this particular solution. Once it is done, sometimes it can be de-air uh, such that uh, we can remove the trapped air bubbles within the within the solution. So that is why we do the de-air. So such that the air bubbles can be removed uh, from the, the solution because presence of the air bubbles can produce some kind of the defects in the product. Now once we prepare the uh, slip in this case then we try to pouring the slip, pouring the slip, the slip is poured into the plaster mold. We already mentioned that we use some kind of the porous material such that uh, water can be absorbed in this particular mold material. Now the capillary action of the porous mold is try to draw the water from the sleeve and finally forms a solid layer over the mold surface. So or inside the uh, mold surface uh, then this uh, this can be produced. So therefore we use this the here the porous material and capillary action uh, of this porous porous mold it will by the capillary action the water can be drawn uh, because of the capillary action and then solid uh, this thing powders can be deposited uh, over the mold wall with a certain thickness. So depending upon the time it can be the thickness can be um, dictates or thickness can be um, modified. So the time the slip remains in the mold that actually determine the thickness of the cast. Now if you want to produce very thick wall say we can allow uh, the slip can be uh, allowed to occur for a longer time. So longer time within the is available in the this mold material. So in that cases we can expect very thicker uh, wall and that means deposition of this uh, this uh, slip uh, the solid part particles over the mold wall or inside the mold wall. Now once it is done the reach the certain thickness then the excess uh, slip can be drained out or in the in the different way or that can be uh, removed from the uh, plaster mold with the, uh, which is uh, existing within the inside of the mold uh, once the certain thickness is achieved in presence of the this slip. Now sometimes the hollow clay cell inside the mold can be uh, can be created. So inside the mold because it is a the slip will be attached towards the mold wall. So that is the overall more or less uniform thickness it will be producing near the mold wall throughout the structure. So that is why it is a kind of the hollow structure clay cell can be created using this, uh, this process. Now once it is done uh, then uh, we need to follow the drying operation. So basically which is partially dry it in the mold to cause or it to shrink I, the mold and develop some rigidity of the other handling. Basically we follow so drying action and uh, such that we need to bring the rigidity of the deposited layer. So uh, in this case in this drying operation we can allow to mold wall to continue the absorption of the water uh, from the mold wall. So in that cases we can say that is the, the it is a gradually absorbing the water through the mold wall. So once drying operation is there then we can go some um, um, other process also for example trimming and finishing operation we can follow. So uh, that means we can depending upon the requirement of the shape of the product we can use the extra part trimming and then we can uh, reach some kind of the finishing operation. But after that we follow some kind of the firing uh, process. In this case the dried pieces is basically big fire and such that it becomes becomes harder or harder and harder or you can say the hardens the clay and it is basically which is and makes it uh, porous during this firing operation. So this kind of the we try to make it the harder of the component which is already uh, made through the mold wall. After firing operation we try to follow the inspection uh, process. Inspection process means we do some quality checking is there any kind of the imperfection in kind of the defects present uh, of this uh, of this component. So after slip casting process. Now all this process three steps basically involve creating the very hollow ceramic pieces. So three steps mean this these steps basically I mean to say that these basic steps preparation of the sleeve I think mold preparation preparation of the sleeve pouring the sleeve draining the excess sleeve drying all these steps basically creating the hollow crea uh, ceramic pieces by draining or the uh, pouring of the extra sleeve uh, from the, the from the mold in, from the mold. So therefore 
or we can allow some kind of the excess slip also such it, it, we want to increase the thickness of the deposited layer of the uh, ceramic uh, in, in this case. So, uh, but it, this is this steps is more actually suitable to create the hollow uh, pieces of uh, hollow pieces ceramic pieces. But if you want to create the for solid part, do we you want to do the slip which continuously refill continuously we can we can refill the this part the slip that means raw materials uh, in, into the mold cavity or pour to the plaster mold in order to compensate for the amount of the water absorbed. So basically here when we continuously pour the slip and this either take the shapes because gradually the water is absorbed what is drained uh, through the capillary action of the the porous mold material or porous um, this plaster of Paris. So when it is water comes through this porous material then gradually to allow uh, pour continuously pouring the this slip or refill the slip uh, into the mold cavity in that way we can we can reach uh, to the a uh, complete the solid uh, solid shape of the component this way we can produce a uh, solid part but if you want to create the hollow part then when it is reaching certain thickness uh, surrounding the wall then we pour the extra slip uh, by from the mold wall so in that way we can create the hollow part but if you want to produce a solid part then we have to pour when there is absorption of the water through the plaster of Paris then what is the volume shrinkage then that shrinkage can be again compensated by pouring the liquid slip uh, into this cavity and then it follow the further processing further drying or draining of the water through the uh, porous mold wall. So in this way we can create the hollow component using the for the ceramic uh, or through slip casting process. Here you can get the slip casting the steps involved in the slip casting process we can we can get some understanding of the slip casting process how it works. So suspension basically slip is basically poured into the mold cavity porous mold is there and we, it is two part we can together we can make it two parts uh, porous mold. Then when it is poured into, into the porous mold it is a gradually what is extracted from the mold wall and when it is extracted then over the wall some, some suspended particle will be depositing over the mold wall. But when it is reaches up to certain time it reaches uh, some thickness considerable thickness is there then we pour the excess slip uh, from this mold cavity you can say that is the th step uh, third step here you can see this second step first step pouring the excess uh, material from the, the excess slip uh, from the mold cavity and once it is done and the fourth step we take it out the the slip cast or you can say green part we can take it out and after that we follow the some kind of the drying operation or and sintering operation just to make it becomes more harder and, and it will be usable uh, for the usable uh, to, to the customer. So this way uh, we can produce the component following the uh, ceramic component following the slip casting process. So uh, now we will try to look into that there are maybe secondary operation is also associated with the slip casting process. So sometimes there might be producing of the uh, flash formation is might be there depending upon the way of uh, the suspension is basically deposited on the mold wall. So it might be possible that sometimes the flash form is removed uh, any excess flash can be removed or uh, then green ceramic parts may be required for machining uh, for to bring certain geometrical features of this particular component. But of course in this case conventional machining process cannot be employed because is basically uh, techniques are not employed but very simple and hand tools can be used to cut the desired features. So we cannot use the, the machining operation what we can perform the, the for the metallic component we perform the machining operation to bring a certain feature geometric features into the into the this uh, component but that kind of the things cannot be uh, applicable in, in in case of the ceramic process. So we have to be very careful because this the, it is very hard uh, but sometimes hand tools can be utilized just to make uh, to get it the desired features. Now advantages of this slip casting process is that very large and complex parts and uh, for example in plumbing where and the uh, art objects can be obtained or can be made by the slip casting process. And then in this case mold and the equipment cost is relatively uh, very low because this is one of the this artistic component can be used in, in the pottery we can use uh, this, this, this simple process and some artistic component can be, dis, uh, can be made using this slip casting process. So actually it is a very, a very old process and uh, this process the equipment cost are also very very low in this case. And of course there is a boost even we can produce the very hollow very easily you can prepare the 
hollow objects using the slip casting process. Even if there is a need a very large casting process also that can also be produced using this particular process. But limitation is that this production rate is actually very slow that means it is a production rate is low means that it uh, to prepare one component it takes very large time as compared to the other in, in any other conventional methods. And of course, dimensional control is actually very poor in this particular process the slip casting process. But advantage is that uh, large and complex parts such as the uh, can be made and of course, we have already discussed the slip casting process we put it here advantage and limitation of the slip casting process. So, now we will do the ceramic processing using the other manufacturing technologies one is the plastic forming operation. So, plastic forming can be carried out uh, in this cases uh, this then extrusion and injection molding operation. So, uh, we say the plastic forming means we try to look into the plastic behavior of the ceramic. So, plastically de deforming the uh, ceramic material that is that term actually this is termed as the uh, pl uh, plastic uh, forming operation associated with the ceramic material. But in this plastic forming is the carried out using the principle of the extrusion process in principle of the injection molding operation that we have already discussed uh, these two cases. But in this case plastic uh, forming tends to orient the layered structure of the clay along the particular direction of the material flow. So, it can create some kind of the layered structure along the direction of the material flow some shared layer can be uh, created uh, when the when the some uh, which direction material is flowing. We will try to see that in, in case of the extrusion process we use the clay mixer. So, we follow the principle of the extrusion process we use the uh, clay mixture which is forced to move along the die opening and the clay mixer can be extended through the screw type of the extrude, extruder. We can create the pressure by using the extruder screw type extruder and then with the application of the pressure the clay or the ceramic will come out through the die opening. So, this is the basically we are using the this extrusion process uh, in this cases, but material are different here the material is the, the ceramic material. But of course, this ceramic material it must have big mixture usually contains to 20 to 30 percent of the water otherwise it is very difficult to process through the die to press it through the die. So, definitely we use the constant cross section of the parts and this is the basically in the dies uh, uh, which is as per the design of the die. Production rate is in this case production rate is very high and tooling cost is also very low in this particular process. But limitation to the wall thickness for the hollow extrusion because it may fracture during the uh, firing uh, operation. So, wall thickness for the hollow hollow, thick, hollow component has to be very carefully uh, look uh, the, the extrusion process because most often it can create some kind of the fracture when you try to follow the firing operation to make it the harder of the ceramic component. So, that is only uh, one important point associated with this thing. Now, following the uh, extrusion process the produce ceramic parts raw material mixture containing the ceramic particles and some binders is extruded. So, extrusion basically we cannot the complete solid particles cannot be uh, passed through uh, during the extrusion process through the die opening. So, here we have to mix some binder such that it becomes little soft and then will be easy to extrude it or it behaves like a plastic like a plastic deformation and then we, we try to uh, press through the die using the extruder. So, in this process from the preliminary sub part that can undergo further shaping operation to get the actual shape of the uh, component to get the final shape. So, this is I can say that uh, this is the one of the steps first steps we follow the extrusion process, but we can f apply further uh, processing further steps also to modify the structure or to modify or to design the different component as per the requirement. Uh, for example, here it is we can have an example the extrusion in combination with the uh, jiggering. So, this is another techniques that can give the design specific design or to particular shape of the component ceramic part. But here extrusion is the primary steps to give a shape for the ceramic raw materials. So, that is why we follow first the extrusion process then we follow the jiggering operation to get the uh, particular design or 
to what shape of the uh, component now even which can further be subjected to some other operations to give the desired shape also even after jiggering operation is the basically give the further shape the shape can be modified using the another process but here remember this uh, extrusion is the primary process uh, for the uh, plastically deforming the uh, ceramic component using this process now the process of pressing can be general in this uh, into three main main types this is the another process which is uh, under plastic deep, uh, forming the pressing can be die pressing weight pressing and the isostatic pressing can be followed in the ceramic material. So, dry pressing is that this technique is similar to the powder metal compaction. So, we, we follow the powder metallurgy technique. So, we deal with that with the compacting the powder. So, dry pressing is basically we are pressing the particles to take the particular shape. But in the dry condition means the moisture content of the mixture is very very low. It can be less than uh, 4 percent moisture content. But it can be as high as 12 it can go up to 12 percent but in this case the for simple shapes such as the white wire refractories from for furnace and abrasive products this type of the the shape can be given following the uh, following the dry pressing operations in this cases high production rate and closed control of the dimensional accuracy is possible in this particular case so this is the dry pressing means basically what we are compacting the uh, powder uh, ceramic powders uh, this is known as the dry pressing operation now wet pressing wet pressing is basically part is from in the mold under the high pressure usually the high pressure we can put this thing or of course we can use the some hydraulic system or we can use some mechanical system also press can be used in this particular process so moisture content can be 10 to 15 percent but in this case also production rate is also very high very quickly you can this thing but part size is limited so very high pressure created in the the certain size of the component but if it's a very big component it is very difficult to maintain the the very high pressure and using the some hydraulic system or mechanical pressing system dimensional control is difficult because of the shrinkage during the drying operations in this case so the weight pressing operation sometimes it is sometimes difficult to control the dimensional accuracy so shrinkage might occurs during the pressing of, of course during the pressing process in this case some intricate shapes such as the filters and electronic packaging uh, this kind of kind of the product can be produced using the weight uh, pressing operation uh, process now there is another technique that is called the isostatic pressing isostatic means we can see the throughout the structure create the constant pressure uh, over the component so this process is ceramics for uniform density distribution throughout the part during the compaction when you try to create the compaction so isostatic means we can try to create the almost equal pressure throughout the structure and this will bring the uniformity the density of the component so there might be this this thing the cold isostatic pressing so here cold isostatic pressing means the pressure is applied using the oil and fluid then green product is subject to the sintering so in this case uh, cold isostatic pressing means the the apply using the oil and fluid through the uh, this compaction through the system oil or fluid system we can create the pressure that which is called the cold isostatic pressing but in hot isostatic pressing the pressure is applied is basically at the high temperature thus both together compacting as well as the sintering operation can occur simultaneously so that is the advantage of the hot isostatic pressing now for example the silicon nitride vanes are made using the hot isostatic pressing and the white insulator for automotive for example spark plug is made at the room temperature so i mean to say that the component silicon nitride silicon nitride is very important the uniform pressure to maintain the uniform density at the same time this pressing should happen at the high temperature so that's such that it will the compaction will be much more easier in this case compaction will be easier so in that case a silicon nitrate is processed and but in this case uh, we use silicon nitrate veins this so these are is for the veins silicon nitrate but it follows the hot isostatic pressing operation but in case of the we want to the spark plug white insulator for automotive spark plug in these cases you can do the, the pressing at room temperature so it means that the cold isostatic pressing is useful to get this kind of the component now i'll try to look into the injection molding 
So injection molding is the another ceramic processing technology and you understand the injection molding operation we have already discussed it follow the similar kind of the principle that means somehow with the application of the pressure so this material is deformed uh, material is injected through the uh, through plastically. So plastic deformation is following but in this cases this is mixture ceramic particles with the mixture with some kind of the binder agent it is pressed through a so narrow small nozzle and we create the, the mold cavity. So injection molding is extensively for the uh, precision forming of the ceramics. So we precision forming of the ceramics we use the injection molding operation. So here raw material is actually mixed with the binder. For example uh, is the thermoplastic polymer or wax can be used in this case the, as a, act as a binder for the ceramic material and then it is injected through the nozzle. So after one, once the it is take the particular shape of the mold, then uh, we follow some kind of the pyrolysis. In that means we remove the binder. Following the uh, pyrolysis means we, you f allow some chemical change, the including the chemical change by application of the heat, such that uh, what way the sintering is done. Sintering means that after compacting, we we'll try to we we'll try to. Uh, remove the this thing the binding of the ceramic particles by just removing the this binder agent uh, through the chemical reaction and uh, the some chemical changes should occur uh, such that it more easily can bind together and of course there must be some application of the heat in this particular process so process is useful very thin section usually 10 to 15 millimeter thickness it is easily applicable the process can produce most engineering ceramics such as alumina zirconia silicon nitride silicon carbide all kind of the ceramic materials can be processed using the injection molding operation but if you need the thicker section which is basically requires control of the material used and the uh, processing parameter so some kind of the internal to avoid any kind of the internal void and cracks to produce the thick section. So basically when you try to handle the thick section, so there is a chances of production of the some kind of the internal voids and cracks by following the injection molding operations. So here you can follow the figure also similar figure the pellets is there, we collect the mixture along with the binder it is it is passed then through the screw some heating system is there that means the application of the heat is there and then so we try to inject it uh, to come through the nozzle within the mold the mold cavity uh, the fill is the mold cavity and what one it is uh, compacting uh, this then we take it we remove it from this thing uh, from this mold cavity so this is the basic process of the injection molding so uh, injection molding operation we follow but in in the for the application of the ceramic material now we see secondary processing operation is also associated with the required for the uh, in this case uh, this for this component what we can produce the through the ceramic uh, injection molding operation. So secondary processing is that one is the uh, firing, firing causes uh, dimensional changes and secondary operations are required to achieve basically dimensional accuracy, surface finish, specific geometrical features are also tried to incorporate through the secondary processing operation. For example, since ceramics are hardness is usually very high, so sometimes we cannot uh, use the conventional machining operation. So conventional machine cannot be produced for the ceramic component. Uh, this is one point. Second point is the selection of the secondary process depends on the properties of the ceramics. For example, such as what is the brittleness, high hardness, high melting point temperature, electrical and thermal conductivity. Looking into all these properties, we can choose or we can follow some kind of the secondary processing operations. So therefore, when you try to finding out the conventional we cannot restriction of the application of the conventional machining process but if you want to do the machining of the ceramic component then we can do ultrasonic machining we can do abrasive water jet machining we can do laser beam machining process we can do lapping and grinding operations for the processing of the uh, ceramic uh, component so say here i have tried to explain that what we can uh, we can produce the the ceramic components specifically which is more important the ceramic processing of the ceramic component is the the slip casting process and you observe the slip casting process in the ceramic process once we do that this can be the primary operations or uh, this uh, for example we can follow the extrusion process also we can follow the injection molding operations all these three processes can be utilized for the processing of the ceramic but in this case, if you want to reach the final com final component which is usable 
so in that uh, of course all these cases we need to follow some kind of the uh, secondary operations to achieve the certain features in the cinema component so that's all thank you very much for your kind attention Thank you.